Sometimes in front-end development, we receive strings that contain HTML. For example, header one, line breaks and paragraphs. Clearly, this is supposed to be outputted as HTML. But if you use text interpolation, it will print out the string rather than formatting it. So to do this, we need to actually use the vhtml directive. And then we need to tell it which property contains the HTML we'd like to output. Do note that anything within the element that has the vhtml directive will be deleted. So all the content in that div will be deleted first. If you put anything in there, it will be removed. And then the vhtml directive will put its content in. So if we go ahead and save this now, you will notice that we have a header, line break, and paragraph outputted as HTML rather than just flat text. And also don't forget that you can format this. I recommend using a computed property, but you can format it, for example, to uppercase. And if I was to save that, you'll notice it will go to uppercase. And I can even click this button with the change HTML method. That method will target the HTML content property and reassign a paragraph. If I hit it, you'll notice it will render that paragraph. So this is perfectly fine, but I would say that it is better to put this into a computer property because you can end up breaking that dynamic link. And this may become more of an issue when it comes to server-side rendering such as Nuxt. Now also I'd like to talk about preprocessors. You can use Jade for example, if you type in Jade HTML preprocessor into Google, you will be able to use the Jade format for HTML. So instead of writing header one, like the standard way, such as this way, which is header one, and then you put your content inside of there. With Jade, you'd just say header one and then you type the content that you'd like to place in. It does actually make things kind of neat, but most people won't use Jade. They'll just use the standard HTML. But one preprocessor that you will see very often is SCSS, and that is note not SAS. SAS is a completely different syntax type that uses indentation. SCSS has the same formatting that is very similar to CSS, but it gives you the nice features of embedding. And I do have a fully featured course on SAS completely free if you would like to take a look. But you can see right now that we also have another issue. We also have the body. And the body is being styled by this hello world.view component. Now imagine this project was composed of hundreds of components. They could have conflicting styles unless you are very careful about namespacing. This can also be a very big issue. To make your projects more robust, it's better to scope. So at the moment, if you were to look at the HTML that we currently have, you'll see that it's not scoped in any way. It's rendering this component, which has a section, a div in it and so forth, this right here, this template, and it's just rendering it out as it currently is seen here. So if we add scoped onto the style tag, if we save that, you'll notice now that we will get something a little bit different when I am to refresh and make sure that it has done what it said it was going to do. So now you'll notice that what we're actually getting is the data attribute. And you'll notice that the body will no longer be in that color because we can't style anything outside of this component. If I put the body styling in a component, randomly somewhere, how am I able to find that? You can use the source mapping for your styles, but it's gonna make things very tricky and more difficult. So what we are here to do is use scoping to make sure that we're only styling what we are supposed to be styling, which is this component only. And now I can use generic styling, such as section. And what it will do is if I save this now, you'll see that it's added those styles to the section. And if I take a look at the section, you'll notice that the CSS selector is section and then it's targeting the element with the data hyphen V attribute and with that value, that unique value for this component. That ensures that whenever I style, it will only style in this component and nowhere else. Now the next thing, and the reason why I'm bringing it up in this lecture is the vhtml. Any html that comes from vhtml will not have that data attribute. So that's a problem in and of itself. For example, we have a paragraph element. If you notice here, we're having a paragraph being rendered out that says hello p1 right there. Let's say I want to style it. So let's say I want to target all paragraphs 
And what it's going to do then is maybe change the font size to 2EM. Now, when I do this, you will notice nothing happens. And that's not because the browser didn't refresh. The reason why that happened was because none of these have that data attribute on them. So what you have to do in this instance is use forward slash deep forward slash. And what that does is anything after that, it will remove that data hyphen V and all those random numbers. It's gonna remove that from the selector. Thus, it will allow me to style it. You'll also notice this with plugins with Vue.js. Sometimes they inject HTML and they won't have the data attribute on. And if you're in scoped mode, and you're going, why isn't it styling these elements? It's because of this reason. It's not removing the scoping because the scoping has been removed for these VHTML elements. So if I go ahead and say, save that now, now you'll notice when I use forward slash deep, it no longer has that extra bit. You'll see that it has, look, target the parent element, this section or any, any particular container with that data attribute and then target the paragraph elements inside of it. And before what you had was that, and then you had that as well. And that's the problem if the style is scoped when you don't have deep on. And so as you can see, it didn't style it. The styles existed, but they don't apply to that element anymore. Whereas if you use forward slash deep, it will remove that part of the selector. So hopefully that makes sense. Go ahead and play around with this, see what you can do and have fun with Vue.js.